Okay, we, we need to move on. Um, we're very lucky today. We've got Aaron Angsu Chatterjee from the University of Plymouth, AC to his friends. Um, I'm going to have to read this because uh, AC has actually got the biggest title I've ever seen and I don't know how he gets this on a badge. Um, AC is the Associate Professor, Director of Technology, Enhanced Learning and Distance Learning in the University of Plymouth. And he's going to talk about the really, really good stuff that the university are doing across Devon and Cornwall. AC. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Andy, for that introduction. Uh, friends, <coughs> colleagues, and even folks call me AC just because it's very difficult to pronounce uh, the name, and, 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 and AC is much easier to remember as well. So I think it was a very fascinating morning today, uh, listening to Adrian and Andy, and specifically looking at the day overall as it's going in terms of looking at open approaches, open standard approaches uh, in, in dealing with medical uh, and health innovation and information systems. Uh, the reason I'm here and, and I sort of got excited about uh, collaborating with uh, the trust and uh, sort of Andy, and the good thing is that now it's University Hospital Trust, so we are, we are even working closer as we move forward, uh, is when I, I think, was in a year back, the introduction run of OpenEP, and the sort of looking, observing the transition of a trust embracing open, uh, standards and technology and it is really brave and it is really commend uh, Andy on that it is a very brave decision to sort of move and take that jump because it is very risky as well but that excited me a lot and us within the university as lot so what 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 I would like to do is where we come in from this sort of uh, open standards perspective in health technology what the work we are doing in uh, the university specifically in the peninsula region because we have mentioned and touched upon a few times in the morning today about the ecosystem and what we believe within ecosystem should happen to foster innovation is not only top down driven strategic innovation uh, approaches funded uh, f from, core, from, from sort of core funding but also bottom up innovation coming up from groups stakeholders which are not uh, necessarily directly uh, aware of some of these technologies and uh, innovations that's happening, which, which links to the sort of wider strategic drive, but can we get patient groups, smaller SMEs, new startups, technology companies locally within the region, and how can we engage them in this process in order to respond to some of the calls that Andy is making? Because as, as, as you said, you, you would love 80 million to do everything at one go, but it's not possible. You have to take a sort of incremental approach, but equally, if you want to reach there faster, if there are more sort of <coughs> hands, joints together with the same strategic approach of uh, adhering to uh, sort of uh, the open standards uh, platforms, then it is possible in a much shorter time frame to make that transition. So I would like to set the scene uh, very quickly that why we are talking about this, uh, just a sort of a reminder, and a lot of you might be aware of this. Uh, is, is, is these two documents that was published a few years back on the five uh, year forward view and sort of personalized healthcare because we want, we, we want to achieve that using digital technologies mainly to scale up uh, uh, the uh, delivery of services uh, in, in enabling new care modules because of, of course as we all are aware that the current model is unsustainable over a period of time. So we need to find newer ways and technology can help in that uh, particular aspect which was something that was sort of recommended through the uh, Wokter review in 2016. And you would see some of the bits that I've highlighted, which specifically talks about the need for all trusts to go live, completely digitized by 2023. But the red one being, and I think which is sort of the theme of the day today, uh, is ensuring inter interoperability and sort of uh, open innovation approach at the very core of it. So it started in sort of that 2016 region, what I think it followed, and I'm not sure if everybody is aware of, is that every region in, England, uh, in the UK, I think, uh, were tasked to create digital roadmaps and then individual digital roadmaps for the regions uh, and, 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 and sort of the localities. So for South Southwest, we have Bristol, we have uh, uh, the peninsula, and we have uh, Somerset. So we had individual roadmap, digital roadmaps for that. So this is an example from the Somerset uh, digital roadmap. And we don't need to necessarily go through, but you could see the words interoperability, paperless system, uh, whole system intelligence. Uh, and, and, and this is from Bristol, I think. Again, looking at similar aspirations. So what I would like to 
show you quickly here is what, why I think what, what's, what's driving Andy, us uh, in the university to work towards. So this is, this is the digital sort of roadmap for one person, one digital gear record, uh, what we have for Devon and Cornwall effectively, the peninsula region. Uh, and you could see open technology data standards at the bottom there. So we are really starting. So, so uh, I think uh, Adrian mentioned about we are just launching, is in the launching phase. That's what it is. And there's a broad timeline on sort of sort of the projects that's in the pipeline, or the strategic sort of drives that you can see in the next few years, uh, with the hope of in, at the, by the end of 2020 we'll ha achieve that state. I'm not sure about that, uh, but we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> So, but at least the, we, have, we, have, we have made a good start, and specifically in Peninsula, the way so Andy has approached it using open AP and uh, open air uh, approach is absolutely absolute the right way to go. So, uh, what I think that this is, these are some of, the, some of the more sort of specifics about where we are today, same, from the same review that I'm talking about uh, in the Peninsula region here, uh, and, and some of the key projects that the priority projects that has been that we are working on, and the aim that we, that, that that sort of we are hoping to achieve, and you could see Plymouth Hospital Trust. Uh, I'll, I'll go back a couple of slides here. I love to see the fact that you have medicine management optimization, and that's sort of rocketing up by the end of 2021. Interestingly, uh, our our trust is not that ambitious, and I think that's more pragmatic and practical because some of the others I'll have. Anyway, I, I, I'm not sure about it, what, what sort of uh, individual uh, funding and strategic uh, investments they have planned for it, but that seems very, very ambitious, unless we can involve the SME sectors, other stakeholders, uh, and using an open standards approach to sort of uh, fast track some of these innovations. So what, what, we, what, what, what would we are doing in the university? Uh, we, we looked at these developments and we were uh, keeping a track of it. We have uh, a digital health research group within the university led by Professor Ray Jones. Uh, and we work collaboratively through a number of years, specifically looking at consumer e-health application development involving patient patient groups. So what, what, what we achieved was we, we, we got funded across two projects. I'll talk to the first project first, which is e-health productivity uh, in innovation in Cornwall and uh, Isles of Silies. And as well as we got another project, similar project, funded by both funded by ERDF uh, for Devon. And the intention was simply to connect stakeholders through networking events like this, specifically and, and foster bottom of innovation. Allow companies locally here uh, within the peninsula region to come up with bottom up solution that they can improve the e-health sector and the market generally, which is much more responsive to the local needs because of course of the demographic differences uh, and, and, and the way uh, individual organizations work. It is, it is fairly uh, sort of ambitious to expect anything that will work in London or, or, or sort of up the country might be equally applicable here. So what we, we started the project last year and uh, it was a sort of a Plymouth driven project what, what I'll do is I'll quickly probably show you this Hi, video, which gives a Epic. very, very big e overview of what Epic and is. innovation in Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. We are trying to improve health and well-being in Cornwall through the use of digital technologies and to build the e-health sector. That is, to help small companies get established with new digital care products. What do we mean by digital technologies? Well, everything from websites, to apps, to wearable tech, to assistive technology, to telepresence, virtual reality and robotics. Unfortunately, developing IT systems for the health service has a bad history of trying to drop systems in that fail because they were not developed in close partnership with patient needs and the experiences and working practices of nurses and doctors who use them. So we need to take a bottom-up approach to find out what the doctors, nurses, patients, carers and other health and social care professionals see as the problem and what they think might be some of the tech solutions. We will use the bright ideas and innovation of Cornish companies to respond to these problems, particularly those in the digital areas, to develop e-health solutions that lead to better health or care, to benefit people in Cornwall, but also sold in other parts of the UK and the world. 
we will input expertise from Plymouth University and Creative England and our other partners to help develop high quality innovation. But we have to build an ecosystem of connections and networks that is sustainable beyond the life of our project. And to do that, we need to recognise that some areas may have pockets of excellence where we can put down some roots and build, while other areas or sectors may be resistant to change and need more support and some help to make that change. We have put down roots in four places. In two general practices, Liscard and St Ives, and two care homes, Liscard and Red Ruth. Then we are identifying all the thriving activity in e-health and working from there outwards to form links and networks across Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. Sometimes we will use the formal structures of NHS trusts and administrative organisations for care and other times we will identify and work with local enthusiasts who will champion the cause of improved use of technology for health. We aim to improve the use of technology in health and social care and leave a vibrant e-health sector supporting jobs and employment. So that, that sort of briefly summarizes what we are trying to do and you you'd sort of uh, picked up probably the fact that we mentioned uh, primary care, social care and secondary care and, and, and said that's something that is different. If you look at the previous uh, sort of, uh, the, if you remember the previous slides, the initiatives, the 12 initiatives, it's still a bit top down, uh, sort of top down driven and more focused towards secondary care and integration into primary care. And so the aspiration is there to integrate with social care, but I think it's a bit down the line. So it's, it's not there yet. So can we help sort of overcome that barrier? By integrating, uh, by by sort of integrating uh, some of these SMEs who are probably toying with the, with the idea of uh, uh, developing products in health, but probably are not there yet, can we help them sort of uh, boost, catalyze it by giving them some initial funding, making them uh, talk to you, come to events like this, see if they are developing products, expanding products, uh, to explore open standards so that in future it's much more sustainable and specifically they can sell beyond what, 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 what currently they are, their market is. Uh, so e-health, just, just a brief, because you, you saw that we are trying to do, it's a very wide definition. It involves, for us, we, we, we looked at it and it has evolved over a period of time, uh, similar to sort of health informatics and what it is, uh, in, involving all sorts of devices, uh, uh, now specifically robotics, gradually picking up uh, significantly. So what, what in terms of, if, if you look at some of these uh, uh, products, we have not even touched that. We are still talking about core monolithic systems replacing sort of paper-based systems, but these are happening now. If you, we work with a lot of clinicians in the medical school and every other week we get somebody saying that, oh, I have a great idea. Can we develop an application around it? And people are going out developing applications uh, on a continuous basis, but are they going to work and scale up in the same way that, that we are hoping to? So I think, I think we have to make them aware of what's out there, how they can work with bigger organizations, trusts, specifically looking at open standards and approaches and, and, and take their products forward. Uh, I have another short video of a potential exciting technology using drones. One one two operator, what is your emergency? It's my dad. I think he had a heart attack. Please help. He's not breathing anymore. Please stay calm. What's your name? Joanna. Good, Joanna. We've got your location. The ambulance drone is on its way. Is anyone is anyone aware of this technology at all at this point of time? Okay, let's go there. A little play.
<laughs> Lazarus. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alec Momo. I'm a graduate student at the TEL working on a project for Living Tomorrow and Visit Kent. Our vision is to improve current emergency infrastructure with a network of drones capable of saving lives. At over 100 km per hour, these drones create an ultra-fast response system capable of increasing this survival chance from 8% to 80%. This is because the ambulance drone is not affected by current road infrastructure, but is capable of flying in a straight line, bringing down the average response time of an ambulance from 10 minutes to 1. So I'll, I'll, I'll pause on that one, but you could see the opportunity there from a bottom of innovation, somebody taking a, a technology using something that probably we'll not think about for the next five, six years, given all the priorities that uh, institu uh, sort of organization one, one will have. Uh, and then applying to a care pathway, say stroke, stroke management, uh, specifically in rural settings like Devon and Cornwall, it, it is a real life changer. But what we are keen to do when we are trying to promote companies like this and offer them some sort of support and, uh, and, 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 and funding uh, to come up with these product ideas is while they are developing the product, once that sort of application is developed, can they hopefully keep open standards in mind and make sure that it is based on a very, very open uh, system architecture so that the data that, that they are collecting, hopefully, or that they are going to uh, uh, integrate with is is uh, interoperable so that that's the, that's the, that's sort of our, our, our mission in, the, in currently specifically working with uh, Andy and uh, Dave and others uh, in uh, open fighter again uh, 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 another example of innovation coming from uh, a, a recently published paper in terms of how non-invasive sort of uh, devices are capturing data so what 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 I'm trying to get at is, is if somebody has heard about Larry Summers' body data, is that we started with height weight, and now we have gone into gen genomics. So the amount of data points has exponentially increased about our body, about our mind, that we are capturing. And it is going to pot potentially further increase. So the, I, think, I think the time is not far off when actually, if somebody has watched the movie, uh, do you recognize this movie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, effectively, which which is which has a concept of pre-crime to something like pre-care because you can do predictive modeling with all those sort of wearable devices, continuously capturing data about your health, uh, body, mental state, uh, and <coughs> that data can go into a, a AI-based decision support system which can inform, say for example, hospitals about uh, what potential surge in demand in a &E. and that And that's, that's, I think, the future, but it's quite a long way away. But there are companies who are actively working on that sort of technology uh, once they have the data. So what did we do so far in Epic? This is, okay. So what, what we did, so far, what we have, it's, uh, we are 12 months down the line and we had a number of workshops. So this, this sort of video presents and you will see similarities of what you are talking about in the morning and, and sort of throughout the theme of the day. Uh, elements of what's the discussions and what we have found so far in terms of the requirements from the bottom up. What is the stakeholders within these communities expecting? What are their expectations? What are they trying to, uh, hoping to achieve? The e-health productivity and innovation in Cornwall in the Isles of Silly project, EPIC for short, but an eight workshop across Cornwall or in seven. September 2017. The work shops attracted nearly 300. Okay, clearly this is not working. Interoperability <laughs> problem. Being porting from Mac to a uh, Windows system, something went wrong in the decoding there. So probably those bigger companies need to work closely in terms of some standardized approach. Uh, so what, what that effectively video was trying to show is that we had a number of workshops uh, across Cornwall uh, and uh, uh, what we did is we put together clinicians, uh, patients, 
SMEs together and pitched for current sort of uh, needs within these areas and we came up with 12 to 15 themes that we think are sort of dominant within the, that region. Uh, and, and, and accordingly, we have, uh, what we have done is we are trying to prioritize those areas and help through the project to support SMEs in responding to those needs by developing products. So these will be very either, so there are, there are two phases of development here effectively. SMEs who have a product, established product, but not necessarily exploited enough within the region or outside the region. So we're trying to provide them exploitative communities uh, where, where they, they, their products can be used. And there are SMEs who are in a very exploratory mode. So they are established in a particular area, but they want to move to health, for example. So exploring with them new opportunities based on these needs to sort of develop products that they can then uh, sell uh, within the region and beyond the region. We're, the same, we're doing the same thing in Devon as well. There's a project called Innovation in Healthy, uh, healthy Aging. Sort of in your packs, you'll have leaflets for both. So if you want to go and have a look uh, on what, what these are. And exactly the same principles with different partners within Devon, uh, working alongside SMEs and, and patient groups. And, and one of the key features within both projects are what we have done is to promote and make sort of provide a kickstart is uh, built in challenge funds. Of, of that sort of amount. So SMEs working with stakeholders could pitch for money managed by Creative England and, 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 and for healthy aging, I think it's the county council, the Devon County Council, uh, to get their products either to market or exploit it in, in, in a different setting. So the, the, the first round of that calls have been out and we have sort of funded a few of those. But we'll talk more about it in, in the session uh, in the afternoon, in the sort of uh, surgery where we could look at some of those ideas and explore if and how we can get that collaboration going beyond the region. Because what we really want is uh, people like yourselves to start identifying areas of opportunity that we, are, we think that are in need and demand within this region, uh, collaborate with local companies or, or set up shop here effectively and, 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 and use local talent, which we can then train within the university because the, going towards sort of open approach is ideal for, for us to develop uh, new sort of uh, degree courses which, which align to that. Uh, we, have, we have also recently received uh, another, it, this was just a couple of days back, a uh, 6.5 million project again to, for creative health and manufacturing sectors uh, and it, this is for the whole of Southwest across three or four universities and number of companies. Again, we are going to, uh, if, you, if you're interested, just follow follow us on, on Twitter and, and we'll, we'll provide more information. But it, it has a similar instrument. We are trying to promote SMEs to work with local uh, pro, uh, sort of local groups here, seek the initial kickstart money to uh, develop applications or exploit something that they already have by testing it and, and, and then take it forward. So all, so of course there's this top down approach, the bottom up approach. What it's doing is we are creating now products and a good example is now that we have the NHS apps library. There are only a few apps yet. So it's the ecosystem is just about starting. So it is in comparison to say Apple or Android. So what we would see in, in sort of the, in your open HR context is where you have this application, application level uh, interfaces where you have applications gradually coming in. Hopefully these will be uh, based on some archetypes as I understand. If, and, and that, that, that allows for portability. But I think through events like this, we are trying to achieve that. What I fear and something that uh, Andy mentioned about fire-based uh, systems scaling up, as this number of data points increase uh, and the ability for us to track more and more data, more and more applications will come across the various uh, sectors, various devices, and will try to integrate with the health record, your patient health record. And I think it will be incredibly difficult to manage such a system where uh, millions and millions of data points are trying to go and integrate. And so I, I think eventually the clinicians will probably not look at it at all because it's just, it's too complicated to adopt, it's too complicated to manage, difficult to train, to, uh, and, and difficult to manage a sustain over a period of time. So that's why, I'm personally excited by what OpenEHR offers because it gives in our stakeholder group clinicians 
set of mm -hmm. the leverage mm -hmm. to develop the architects and hence which can then be used by developers sort of developing companies to utilize and then develop their product so that it can then be switched across any system and and they can make a business out of it effectively as andy said it is not about open source at all it can be open source you can still uh, develop open source product but it can be completely completely commercial if you want to be so i think that's it's just to uh, uh, rephrase that is if i is a fire is great uh, and i think it it solves a uh, temporary uh, sort of it provides temporary solution but in the long term it will be really sustainable given the sort of scenario that i sort of painted in terms of the ability for us to track so much data and everybody wanting to push that data into that record is going to be unmanageable unless we start bottom up and thinking like andy is trying to do here in plymouth finally it's some something that adrian mentioned about that lovely advert in saying that no emr <coughs> resistance effectively what we have been talking about and we'll be talking about throughout the day is probably only one bit of the whole picture so when i mentioned that timeline in that uh, diagram that i think it's fairly ambitious to say that we can do all of those things by 2021 having one sort of care one sort of record because if you see this number of this is a very recently published paper uh, in journal of uh, medical inform uh, informatics and research uh, which is around non adoption abandonment and challenges to scale up spread and sustainability so it's an extensive work a piece of work done by a number of researchers uh, led by greenhalk uh, which lists some of those areas and you could see the pressures from organizations wider systems adopters unless we take them on board as we are going through this change the, the the resistance will delay the process or even stop it at some point of time so we we need to be aware of those some of those things and at least from our point of view we are trying to do that uh from a very sort of very early phase in both of both the projects and now trying to working with yourselves so that we can see how how the synergy can work and the ecosystem can sustain over a period of time because that's what the ecosystem should do like uh apple or android are doing Thank you. Thank you, AC. Um, we've actually just gone into coffee time. I can take one quick question. AC is actually leading uh, um, a workshop this afternoon specifically about this, so we can get into as much detail as you like there. But one quick question, if anybody's got a question. You all want to go to coffee, coffee. don't you? <laughs> There's one at the back there. Just... Um, heartened to hear from you see the recognition between um, the message and theory of interoperability using fire and the um, systems theory of interoperability using open EHR and the recognition uh, of the limitations of both actually and its horses for courses um, and that um, you haven't um, succumbed to the hype cycle that um, you know fires the next layer, the silver bullet, and it's going to solve the problems of the world. It will solve some problems, and it will get benefit from it. But um, we've been here before with new technologies, and you're absolutely right. We need to start from the bottom up with new systems at the uh, structured persistence layer in an open standard, because then the world is your oyster. Absolutely. I, th I think we are, we are tr hopefully trying to do that within Epic. That is my view. It's not necessarily the project's view because when we're trying to engage SMEs, we do need to provide them a short-term short solution in terms of so that they are, their business is viable and sustainable because as the change will take time, it's, it will be a mixed economy as the bigger organizations go through this transition. But at least if there is an awareness that this is the future, and pr probably the most sustainable way to do that, and as you are developing products uh, uh, th th through your sort of uh, initial development cycles, if you keep that in mind and, and have an eye for it, I think in the longer term it will benefit the businesses most and hopefully all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, AC. Thank you.